Dr. David Levi made his rounds. Hypertension, broken wrist. I'll schedule you for x-rays to make sure. No, Mr. Jacobs, you can't catch sickle cell anemia. Upon leaving the clinic, he stopped the nurse. Nurse Rodriguez, we're administering the final dosage on Mrs. Johansson in 65A tonight. Inform the family. She should be awake within a few hours afterwards. Yes, Dr. Levi, she said, and hurried off to take care of Mrs. Johansson. Dr. Levi had been lauded by medical journals around the world for his work on coma patients. It was still in the experimental phase, but his success rates kept climbing. Patients who'd been in comas, some even in persistent vegetative states, for months, sometimes years, were finally waking up, all thanks to him. He had been working tirelessly trying to get as many participants as possible for the trials, but it was difficult convincing patients' families. Experimental treatments are usually only seen as a last resort, and unfortunately, one of the side effects of the treatment is the patient is declared legally dead for a prescribed amount of time before the treatment brings them out. Ironically enough, he had only just recovered from a severe injury where he spent a few weeks in a coma himself. Drunk driver hit him head on. The driver was dead on impact, but Dave had managed to hold on and make a full recovery. He felt a hand on his shoulder. Dr. Cordham. I still can't believe you're back on the job this early, Dave. Dr. Levi grinned sheepishly. I honestly wouldn't know what to do with myself if I stayed at home, Bob. Dr. Cordham placed his hand on Dr. Levi's shoulder. God, when was it? Six months ago? I still can't believe you survived that crash and you're walking around. Just lucky, I guess. You're doing good work here, Dave. If we lost you in that crash, you never would have followed through on the coma work, and Mary would still be somewhere in there. Tears formed on the sides of Dr. Cordham's eyes. Dr. Levi seemed uncomfortable with the attention and sudden overflow of emotion. I'm glad we were able to bring Mary back to you. How is she doing? Wiping his eyes with a handkerchief, Dr. Cordham replied, Oh, well... PT is pretty hard, but she's making progress. She's a little more secretive and gets short with me a lot more than I remember, but who comes out of a year-long coma cheery, right? Dr. Cordham grasped Dr. Levi's hands tightly. Thank you for my wife, Dave. Dr. Levi gave a polite acknowledgement, wished Dr. Cordham a nice day, and continued his rounds. Eventually, his shift was over. His achy feet from walking countless miles down the hospital corridors and achy eyes from looking over endless charts rejoiced as they could finally get some rest. He made his way out to the parking lot. He walked past the other parking signs until he was greeted by the spot labeled Dr. David Levi. He hit the button on his key fob. The driver's side door beeped and unlocked. He was settling into the driver's seat when a smell wafted his way. A very familiar smell. Looking in the rear view, David was met with the face of a giant black spider. I thought I had a few more weeks. The spider's mandibles clicked noisily. Then a voice was heard. Yes, 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 David. Thought being the operative word. But as you are well aware, our deal is one that is subject to change quite quickly and without warning. One of the spider's legs reached out and caressed David's cheek. He jerked back slightly and shivered involuntarily. Oh, 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 David. I would arrive in a form you find appealing, but since you have such amusing reactions to this one, I don't think I ever will. It's still five, isn't it? That hasn't changed, has it? David asked with an edge to his voice as he collected himself. The spider withdrew his leg and seemed to scratch his chin. Hmm, yes, we'll stick with five for now. Don't want to get greedy, now do we? Thanks for your generosity, David mumbled under his breath. Within a moment, the spider had maneuvered itself out of the back seat, pressed its back against the windshield, and faced David, its fangs inches from his eyes. 
Oh, so snide. Oh, so ungrateful, little Davy. I found you clinging to life inside that car, seconds to live, pleading with your God in all his mercy and silence. I offered you a deal, and you accepted. Every breath you draw is a direct consequence of my mercy, my beneficence. All I ask is some rough assemblance of manners and our agreed-upon payment. Bullets of sweat ran down David's face. It takes time to get the families to trust me. They, they don't get desperate automatically. They need time or a push. Can't you do something? Droplets of venom splashed David's white coat as the spider's face drew closer to his. How many times must I explain this to you, David? I can't act without specific conditions being met. Your very simple job is to create those conditions in order for me to act. I don't care if you have to smother them in their beds one by one, but get it done. Get them to the brink and I pull them back. Or our loving relationship ends, and an entirely different relationship begins. One I will begrudgingly enjoy, and you will not. Now, to the matter at hand. The spider raised its head, fangs glistening. My payment. In a blur of movement, the fangs sunk deep into David's head. David's eyes rolled back as gurgling gasps issued from his gaping mouth. So... Room 44B, 65A, and 3 in the pediatric ward on the fourth floor. Oh, David, you do spoil me. The spider waved one of its many legs at the drained and desiccated husk that was David. Suddenly, breathing started again. The puncture wounds on his head were gone, and the light returned to his eyes. You could always just... Ask me, David remarked as he groggily came back to consciousness. Yes, and you could always microwave a steak and drink a 47 Cheval Blanc through a sippy cup. There are protocols to be followed, David. Eight by this time next month. David visibly fought back the urge to protest and stared out the window. Eight by this time next month. Oh, cheer up, David. You've just brought yourself another month to enjoy everything this life has to offer. Don't waste it with your mopiness. David glanced back at the rearview mirror, and his benefactor was gone. He sat there and cried for a few minutes. Hating himself, but not hating himself so much as to not make immediate plans for next month's payment. Twenty minutes later... He turned the key in the ignition and drove away. Marjorie Johansson didn't understand. One moment she was watching her husband mow the lawn, and now she... she didn't know where she was. So much darkness. She didn't understand. It had felt like she'd been here for months, and she'd finally made peace with her situation. But suddenly she was gripped with pain. So much pain. She cried out for what felt like forever, but no one heard her. She felt like she was sinking down into a river of needles, each piercing her unceasingly. Her voice felt raw as she screamed for help, for someone to just make the pain stop. Someone. Anyone. A soft voice came from the void. Anyone? <laughs> 